by design and this is make and take Tuesday today I'm changing things up a little bit um, had a busy weekend and didn't get a chance to film a full out tutorial but I did want to share this adorable card made with the amazing paper grace die of the month from spellbinders this is the little oven and if you go to amazing paper grace and i'll link below you can see all the different ways that you can make this this is one of her pop-up vignettes super cute it actually has like a cooktop you can if you do it like the little box that she's made it to be i chose to turn mine into a shaker card and I made a seven by five card folio with a side closure. And I'll show you the pieces that I used and walk you through how to create this little shaker. It is so cute. Look, there's even cookie racks on the inside, which just cracks me up. You've got your little dials here. You've got a clock up here, little hot mitts on the side. Here's your little utensils. The details in this little, uh, this month's die are amazing. I've gathered up some little birdie flowers. This is some Spellbinders ribbon um, and a cute little whisk charm over here on the tag. So this opens out like this. We've got a little side pocket with a couple of, of course, recipe cards. What else would you put inside here? It has to be recipe cards. And then over here, I've created a pocket with a little tea wallet. And you could put a gift card in there for mom if you wanted to. A honey stick to go with the tea wallet. And then just a little photo folio so you can get a few of those great pictures of you baking with the kids or the grandkids. Those are kitchen times are always the best times in my house. That's where most of our memories are made. Um, I love being in the kitchen. So this is a super easy folio to make. I'm just going to walk you through the steps. You want to cut two um eight and a half by five inch pieces of 110 pound cardstock and then just overlap those and you really it's hard to tell where they get overlapped but these are overlapped um right here is where i join them together overlap those score at seven score at seven and a half fold then score at seven and again and then from this seven inch score line, you're gonna cut a two inch flap that becomes a pocket. It's such an easy, easy folio to put together. And then I've just added a simple little pocket over here with side gussets, really simple and easy. And the rest is just assembling the little oven on the front and adding your decorations. What a great way to give a gift to mom or a housewarming gift or even for a bridal shower. Put a couple of your tried and true recipes in here and that bride will be thanking you for a very, very long time. So I just want to show you, this is the Echo Park Farmhouse Kitchen. This is an older collection, but it was too perfect not to use. Um, just really great kitcheny vibe in this paper collection. And here is the die. There's a lot of pieces, but don't let that overwhelm you. Um, on the back of your packaging, there's a really good graphic that shows you how many of each piece to cut out. Also, if you go to Becca's, um, she, will, she has a live video where she shows you how to cut it out. But basically, I cut this piece from plain cardstock, and then I cut it again from my patterned paper. And I put the oven door in the one that I cut from patterned paper. And that way, you know, I've got my little window for my shaker card. So the backer piece is just this and cut the tabs off. And then die cut this again, cut the tabs off, but this time die cut it with the oven door piece in there. And then just back this with a piece of clear cardstock. Then I used this um, rose gold foil paper to cut out the back piece. I cut out an oven drawer with this kind of graphite looking paper. I wanted there to be some contrast. These are the knobs and the clocks and I cut those out with both rose gold and the graphite so that I could get dimension and detail on those knobs, which I think looks really good. Then this is your cookie racks and this is your 
uh, piece that goes on the back of your stove where your controls are. And I cut those out of the rose gold. This piece is the uh, legs on the bottom and I cut those out of the rose gold. And then these guys, you can just cut out of little scraps and find little scraps of the red uh, plaid paper to cut out the oven mitts. So that's really all I did. I didn't use all these other dies. I kept it very simple for myself. I may try to make the pop-up vignette before it's all said and done because you have to go to Becca's blog to see it. It is so stinking cute. Um, I think you'll really I think you'll really like, there's even a little cookie sheet, look at this. So these circles can double as cookies. So you can cut these out and put them on your little cookie sheet. Of course, this is the top of the burner and this is the base of the burner. So if you do it like the box, you can do the actual stove top and this is the stove top for the actual box. So, and I may try doing one of those as time allows. It's just, I had a lot going on this weekend and I did not have time to get that done. If you're doing the pop-up vignette, this is the sides and these are the slits so that where you can slip it together. So it looks like a lot of pieces and it looks really intimidating, but really if you just do it step by step, it comes out great and it's a really fun little gift. So that's it for me, super short. Um, Make and take Tuesday, you know, sometimes you just have to live life and you have to spend time with your family when you get the chance. So I spent time with family this weekend as opposed to uh, working in the studio and getting a Tuesday tutorial made for you. But I'll be back next week with something good. And I'll be here Thursday with a throwback Thursday. All right, guys, that's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. You can find a link to supply list on my blog, and I'll put that in the description box below this video. Thanks for joining me. Go get your craft on. Bye.